In 1996, a drug company put out an advertisement that we need volunteers to test a cream that is for pain. A lot of people that had body pain volunteered. In the middle of those, there were people that had no pain as well. The people that had pain it had nothing to do with it. But the ones that didn't have any pain, they would squeeze their hands with pliers so it hurts. Then on one hand, they would put the painkiller cream and after a few minutes, they would ask them, how do you feel? Every single one of them said that I don't feel pain on the hand you guys put the ointment on. So it's a pain killing cream. It should kill the pain. But here's where you're making a mistake. This was an ordinary cream. It's not meant for pain. So why did the people say the one with the cream killed the pain? This is in the placebo effect. The most common type of placebo is in drugs. There have been plenty of times where a person experiences a problem and with a fake drug, all of a sudden they feel fine. In the history, a lot of doctors have been using this placebo effect for about 300 years. It could have been used way before that, but it wasn't written in the storybooks. Back in the day, they used placebo a lot because they didn't have access to all types of drugs. Like for example, they would make a dummy drug and mix something with water and give it to the patient and tell him to take a couple sips a day and you'll be fine in 4-5 to five days. And the cool part was that most of the time, the patient would feel better. It only wouldn't work if someone actually had a real issue. Do you know what placebo means? Placebo is a Latin word for I shall please. Good doctors would use placebo to help the patient out. And there were also scamming doctors as well that used the placebo effect. Like some scamming doctors would say, you need surgery. They would put them to sleep, make a cut on a part of their body, and sew it up. They would wake him up later and say everything went fine and by tomorrow you can leave the hospital. They didn't do anything to the patient but after the surgery the patient would feel better and of course he would pay a huge bill as well. In the 1950s some drug companies put out an advertisement that they need more volunteers. Volunteers that experience headache. A lot of people volunteered for this. When they were all in the room, they told them, half of you guys will get a placebo pill, half of you will get the real pill, and the placebo doesn't do anything to you. But the cool part is that they interviewed them individually, and every single one of them said that my head feels better and I don't experience the headache anymore. And of course, the ones with the placebo pill felt better as well. You can really use placebo in a positive way in the world, especially for people that experience a lot of stress, depression, anxiety, and they're always worried. For these types of problems, it's a great way to fix. They give them a placebo pill, the same pill brings the stress level down, lower blood pressure, and they overall get happier. Even though the pill doesn't do anything with making you feel better. But the weird part is that we're so advanced in technology, but we still don't know why this placebo effect works so well in the human brain. But scientists believe when you get a placebo pill, your own brain releases endorphins and endorphins are like natural painkillers. And this natural painkiller eases pain and makes you feel overall better. Placebo is best for pain and blood pressure. So placebo is a really good thing, right? It's good, but it's temporary. 
Because if there's real pain in someone's body, they will get better, but it will return eventually. But if we come out the placebo effect in the drug business and talk about other types, it's cooler and more interesting. Like a suggestion from a psychiatrist said to test this on two people on death row. They will bring two people on death row and blindfold one of them. And the person with the blindfold, they would cut his arm. This was the style of execution. The first guy dies obviously. Then the second guy that watched it all happen gets blindfolded. They will scratch his arm with a pen and pour a little bit of warm water on where they made the line of the pen. What happens next is extremely surprising because they notice he dies as well and they didn't do anything to him. But it was the thought that made sure he was dead even though nothing happened. But what you're seeing, it's all your brain and your brain makes up all the thoughts like that. Hypnosis was considered a joke or something fake and people didn't realize why people go through hypnosis. People thought hypnosis was like some superpower from something else. But that was kind of your brain and like the same thing as a placebo. When you believe it so hard, it happens. When you convince someone you've lost your hearing, they will believe they've lost their hearing. When you convince someone you will not experience any pain, the other person will not experience any pain. I just have one advice. Just think before you speak. Think about what your thoughts are going through. Just be careful what you tell yourself. Don't ever say to yourself, why is my life like this? Why am I so miserable? Whatever you convince yourself to, it happens. Always try to think something positive because not only will it make you feel happier, but in the end, it will turn into reality. In this situation, parents' job are extremely important. A parent can convince the child that you can pass any problem in your life. In that case, that child will become a champion. And in the opposite, if you tell a kid you can't do it, you're not good enough for it, you make him weaker and you convince him that he's a weak person. All these thoughts and things are all happening in the thing right behind your eye. The brain. Something we haven't gotten to know very well, 